nine twenty ish ballpark. Okay. Yep, I, I will let him know. Somewhere in that land. Uh and I would say, Alex Allen, if you've got a preference, to me, that feels like one of you to sort of lead that. And as always, if there are any questions that you can think of in particular that you'd want to ask, uh, especially for maybe Vargas or somebody where it might not necessarily be you all leading that interview, just send it in chat. And
Good evening, race fans. Uh, buonasera to those of you with an Italian flair this evening. Welcome to Podium Esports coverage of Landon Castle's Monza Madness. Live tonight from the Autodrama Nazionale Monza in Monza, Italy. I am James Pike from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, joined tonight in the booth by some very special guests from Lincolnton, North Carolina, Jacob Seelman, from Goldsboro, North Carolina, Alex Hayden of MRN Radio, and of ESPN, NBC, TNN, TBS fame, we have from Newport, Rhode Island, Alan Bestwick on the call this year, or call with us this evening. And Alan, I turn to you first, an eSports debut for you this evening, and first race in a little while, but a wild race that I think we're going to see tonight. This beast of a track is unlike anything we've seen in real life, and this combination is sure to serve up a few quirks that a lot of race fans probably have never seen before. Yeah, James, I've been sitting here watching some of the practice and uh, looking at some of the driver's tweets and things like that, and everyone's using one word to describe it, mayhem. And I think that's a good word uh, and should be a lot of fun. You know, this is a, an old racetrack. They've done a really good job of capturing the character of the racetrack. So picture Talladega, uh, tighter, a little uh, just as fast maybe even a little faster and excessively bumpy chaos is uh, another good word to describe what i think we're going to see so it should be fun chaos i think abound alex hayden because that's one thing that we saw in some of the practice races last night and something that i think we're going to be guaranteed to see tonight you look at this racetrack and with the speeds that they're running and with the banking you think at least initially you'll see something like a daytona or a talladega but with the way cars are going to bounce around here since damage is completely turned off on this race gonna feel a little bit more like a figure eight racetrack and it might be more about survival than outright speed yeah, Alan Bestwick pointed out the, the facts about this historic Monza Oval track. 30 degrees of banking in the corners. They're identical in turns one and two as they are over in three and four. The straightaways, completely flat. You mentioned the bumps there. That's something that these drivers have to get used to because if you hit a bump in the wrong way, the car will break traction. It will bounce up, potentially get up into the outside ball, uh, wall, maybe get down to the inside. The thing about this, to me, that's going to be about survival is because the fact that when you dive off into to the corners here, they're blind essentially. There's a lot of trees that line the infield to driver's left, so you can't see the banking in front of you. So if there's a car out there that's got a problem on the banking as you're going through the corner at 190 to 207 miles an hour, that's the speed variance we've seen, you're going to have no time to react. So it's going to be a lot of fun to see how this one plays out. And it may well be about how many wrecks you avoid than it is how many laps you complete in order to find your way into victory lane. Now, for those of you who have watched Podium Esports broadcast before, we more than a few times have heard people ask, is that Alex Hayden? And is that Alex Hayden? And we are going to settle that question once and for all because the answer is that it is not Alex Hayden, but it is instead Jacob Seelman that we bring in now. And even though Jacob sounds an awful lot like Alex Hayden, he is a bit of a different person and has seen plenty of eye racing in his day. But again, nothing quite like this. No, nothing like this at all, James. Uh, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, a, a treat for me. I think uh, some of the back and forth that we've already had in preparing for this Monza Madness event. Uh, Alex and I have had so some fun bounces in the preparation. And, and tonight, uh, you know, the, the word mayhem got uh, bandied about there uh, when you were talking to Alan Bestwick a minute ago. That is uh, absolutely the word I would use to describe it. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. And you're right. Uh, this, is a ch this is a new challenge challenge for me it, it's by far the most uh, unique and most interesting track in sim or in real life that i have called uh, to this point but uh, you stack 60 drivers on here and we're going to have plenty to talk about over the course of 30 laps tonight and i'm looking forward to getting down to it a pretty simple setup on the end of things it is no yellow flags 30 laps straight up green to checkered so not the longest race but the one that's going to provide for many opportunities to bounce around this oval here at monza as we bring in the co-creator of this event and man behind the madness landon castle now joins us in the booth and landon easiest question here how on earth did you come up with this idea to begin with I don't know. I think this is this is one of those things that just happens on iRacing. Uh, ultimately, 
uh, we're not the first ones to run cup cars at Monza, uh, but Garrett Smithley and I, about a week ago, we messed around with some hosted sessions, put cup cars on this track. Uh, we originally ran the unrestricted um, old COT cars. Those are a lot of fun. We started running um, the current cup series car. They can draft really well, but they're still a handful. Uh, we had Chris Overland build us a setup that is absolutely a terror to drive it's not something you would run if you were trying to run the a class um anywhere and we just found a good race format that made it exciting so landon alan bestwick here how did this field come about you've got drivers from nascar from indycar from imsa from world of outlaws and uh, some i racing drivers as well how did you go about this was this just all a, a social media cell phone thing Man, it really was word of mouth and social media that drove this. Um, just so many drivers were were interested in this race, seeing uh, my Twitch streaming, um, and a lot of drivers on iRacing were interested in it. So we, I started making videos and tweeting about it and inviting people. And, you know, one person of interest generated into 25 people of interest. So um, you'll see a mixture of not just professional drivers, but some dignitaries as well, like Tim Clark is in the field from NASCAR. Um, and so a couple good friends of mine as well. Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely a cast of characters. So we described this a minute ago as a race that has all the potential of chaos, mayhem. Uh, you named it Monza Madness. Is that what you expect? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's why the format really plays into that. Um, there's no damage on the cars. There's no cautions. Um, we're pretty loose with the rules as well. So a lot of black flags will get cleared. Um, you know, if somebody misses a pit road entrance or something like that, we're probably going to clear the black flag. You know, ultimately, every driver can finish this race. There's no reason to DNF this race, because if you fly off the racetrack and it resets you to your pit box, you just can sit and wait. And and actually, um, you can get reset in your pit box and have a two minute tow and still be in contention to win this race. It's that much of an attrition. It's that much of a survival race. So it is just going to be pure mayhem, a lot of fun. Um, the smartest driver that can make it through this field will win. I set an over under as the winner is involved in 1.5 incidents. <laughs> That's over or under. <laughs> way over that it, way over that <laughs> um the you will probably see the winner um if the winner of the race does not have a reset tonight um the winner will probably at least be spun out um be completely slowed down to a stop at least once in the race um there's a good chance that there's only a couple cars on the lead lap but there'll be a lap car that takes out um two or three of the leaders at some point um, in the closing laps of the race. We all, the other thing we did is we set the fuel load um, to be about a 16 lap window. So no matter what, whether you have to reset or not, um, even if you have a clean race, you're gonna have to make a pit stop to complete this 30 lap event. So um, 62 cars on the starting grid, it's quite a sight to see. Uh, and I'm excited to see it from a broadcast perspective because I've only ever seen it from the in car. That yeah, should be uh, a lot of fun. I'm watching some of the practice ongoing now, and you can see the chaos and, uh, and the mayhem. And so, Landon, we look forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. Great job assembling this. And, uh, James, we've got a, a lot more to talk about before the green flag and before qualifying gets underway. Plenty Thanks indeed lot, to talk about. Yep. Plenty indeed to talk about as uh, you watch practice right now. For those who might be a little bit confused, this is why you see cars on your screen. You look up in the top left, that clock that reads about 23 minutes and change. That is your practice clock that tells you how much time we have left in the practice session. So it'll be 20 minutes left to practice for these drivers about. And then we go into a five minute group qualifying session, which functions very much like group qualifying on a restrictor plate track back when NASCAR had that as part of the program. And then We'll get set for the race here very, very soon. We now turn our attention to the next driver to join us in the booth, Garrett Smithley, who also helps to develop this race along with Landon Castle. And Garrett, uh, you and Landon have really come up with something wild here. He gave us his own take on it just a moment ago. What's your initial take on just the idea and everything that's been set up within the past few days and the past week? Oh, I'm just, I'm so glad that it came together like it did. This is one of my all-time favorite tracks on iRacing. It's just something fun. 
It's historic, it's different, it's fast, it's wild, it's dangerous, it's all the things that we love about iRacing. You talk about the realism, which, I mean, is second to none on iRacing, but then you talk about stuff that you can't do in real life. You, you cannot race this track like we are in real life. So, um, as I'm going down into the corner here in turn three, uh, I think this is my first in-car interview, so uh, at, at a place like this, it's pretty wild, but um, it's just so much fun. It's, it's just something to blow off steam. Um, we've been pretty serious about this pro invitational i know the indy car guys have their saturday races um, there's a lot of different races that are going on that that are taking a lot of of time and a lot of effort and i we've we me and landon just felt like this was a really good way to blow off steam everybody got to spend time with their families on easter um, and enjoying that but um, now we get to kind of just come on here have some fun and put on a show for the fans so garrett how in the world did you get so many different drivers from all of these different disciplines of motorsports to come on board and participate in this driving nascar style stock cars at this racetrack yeah, I think it's just a combination of everybody just kind of coming on board. Um, we have a, a group me, a, a group chat that we have for the pro invitational stuff that kind of iRacing and uh, Denny Hamlin and a couple of those guys kind of put, put together. So we first reached out there and just anybody that has been active on iRacing, just, you know, Twitter DMs and text messages, Twitch streams, just any any possible way that we could possibly reach out to, to people to, to put this thing on. And it's really blown up. You know, we got you guys broadcasting now we got all these drivers we got 60 plus drivers on the grid i think it's going to be a, a lot of fun tonight garrett who was the biggest surprise of all the drivers you were you guys were able to get to agree to come do this who was the biggest surprise that maybe you weren't sure that you were going to be able to get to say yes well, Landon kind of led that but i mean you know just look at the list like somebody like tony Kanan, you know indy 500 champion um you know joseph newgarden indy champion um you know some of the nascar guys kyle larson kurt bush is in here champ i mean we got so many champions in here um and then having you know guys like alex hayden alan beswick um yourself jacob you know all, all you guys that have just kind of come on board with this deal it's um it's exciting it's exciting how much it's blown up and um i i hope you guys have just as much fun as we're gonna have because i know it's gonna be a blast very sure real quick any expectations for where you think you may end up in the uh, final rundown when it's all over i want to win man <laughs> just because we're having fun doesn't mean that we're not competitive i, I want to win um i gotta give a shout out to uh to the lean stream the lean team that i got on my twitch channel right now streaming it's really blown up i do this thing when when i i twitch and when i i race i lean in the corners and that's kind of blown up and we got this spacex car we were doing jumps earlier in the week so we're just having i mean maximum amount of fun here and i'm just so glad that everybody came on board and um it's 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 gonna be fun stay tuned everybody we're looking forward to it that's garrett smithley james pike and i believe we're actually going to move to one of the drivers he referenced uh, next here in our pre-race show in the form of indianapolis 500 winner tony canon tony canon now joins us in the booth and now we have alan bestwick here to take care of all the good stuff and all the madness and ab will lead us into our interview with tk TK, happy Easter. If I said uh, you were going to share a day with your family and then go race at Monza at night, would you tell me I'm crazy? Maybe speechless might be the better answer there, Alan. Yeah, he might, be, yeah, yeah. <laughs> might, have his, might have his hands full, too. I don't blame him just because this is so crazy as it normally is. But in either case, yeah, I think that's something that we've hit on a little bit with some of these drivers, but just the diversity of this list, because it's it's not just NASCAR. It's not just IndyCar. You've got Jordan Taylor making his eSports debut tonight in this race. You've got Kevin Swindell, who won on Wednesday night in the Fox Sports 1 race and had that big win at Knoxville a few days ago. You've got some drivers that qualified in via the qualifying races that Landon Castle put together and so many different parts of the motorsports world coming together for this race. It's it's awesome. And, you, and, and it's kind of imposing, too, when you look at a list of 60 drivers. 60 drivers. That's, that's a lot to keep an eye out for, for sure. Let's see if we can try on this again, and we'll see if we can get Tony Kanaan in here. Tony Kanaan, James Pike of the Broadcast booth. Have a copy? Hey, guys, yes. There we go. TK, Bit of a challenge, this track, this car, this combo, new to everybody. What are your initial thoughts on it? 
I love it. I mean, uh, you know, uh, the track, actually, I have a lot of history at that track. Uh, I, uh, I lived in Monza when I was in Italy prior to come to, uh, to America. So this is the, my, my hometown. It was my hometown for four years. So uh, extremely happy to be racing there. First time on a cup car. Um, I'm a little bit in trouble at home because I promised my wife yesterday after the, I, the IndyCar I racing that today I was not going to touch the sim and then Landon sent me a text and um, I guess I'm sleeping in my sim tonight because definitely she's not going to let me in the bedroom. <laughs> uh, maybe if you bring back a trophy. Uh, TK I, Allen, best with care. Hey, Alvin, how are you, man? Tell me, tell me about, great. Tell me about this sim racing for you. Is it fun? It's a lot of fun. Uh, I, uh, you know, I, I debated for a while if I should get a sim at home. I mean, I'm, I'm extremely busy with the kids and, and you know, just uh, in all the triathlons that I do, the IndyCar races and everything else. So for me, it was uh, always debating to have one because I knew I was going to spend, you know, all the time on this thing. And actually, uh, you know, because of the situation that we have, this is the only way we 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 have to entertain ourselves, entertain the fans. So I gave up and uh, I built a rig and I have it in my house. So uh, I love it. I mean, I think, uh, you know, nights like tonight when you can get, the entire racing community together. I mean, saying this, I talked to Kevin Harvick last week in his podcast. You know, I'm so glad that this is uh, this thing, us and you guys, and you know, it's just, it's over. It's one one community, and uh, it's so nice to see everybody together. We're having a lot of fun. I mean, we're crashing left and right and trying to get it right, but uh, it's uh, it's a fun night. I'm I'm really enjoying it. You talked about living in Monza just before you came to the United States. Did you ever walk the oval track, get to drive anything around the oval track? Uh, I drove a rally car. They do like a little rally there. So uh, I did. And then actually I used to run by foot to exercise at the park. And I uh, actually did. I did that part of the oval. So uh, it's, it's an awesome place. I mean, the graphics are unbelievable. It's exactly the same. I mean, I, I felt like today it was the first time actually I, I played on iRacing. Uh, at this track and then i looked i was like i felt that i was there it's it's so real oh that's phenomenal tony great to talk to you we look forward to watching this and uh, having a good laugh along with you thanks Alan. yeah you guys have fun enjoy it's gonna be a great show tony canon their former indianapolis 500 champion and jacob sealman we now turn to one of the names from the sim racing side of the corner one of the premier streamers on twitch of iRacing now joins us in the booth jacob sealman is with jabo himself justin batello and justin batello is certainly a name that we've uh, uttered several times on podium esports broadcasts of the past justin uh, First off, what were your initial thoughts uh, on being part of this? And uh, what, what was the reaction when uh, it was a reality that, hey, I'm going to get to run with some of the guys that are in this field when you're talking about Indy 500 winners and IndyCar champions and a whole bunch of NASCAR names that we all see on TV on the weekends? I mean, this has got to be a bit of a surreal feeling from your standpoint. Definitely a surreal, surreal feeling. I can't believe it. This is awesome. I'm very excited. I uh, I can't believe the field in here and I have my name next to them. It's uh, absolutely awesome. So this is pretty cool. As an avid iRacer, have you spent any time uh, running this Monza Oval in the past? And, and what's the, the opinion of this cup car around this racetrack? I mean, we've seen mayhem in the practices and the practice races. It looks pretty crazy. Very crazy. It's very bumpy and it's very fast. We're going over 200 mile an hour and it's crazy. It's awesome. I know uh, we've been working through this. We've had the couple of practice races, and we've had about an hour or so of practice. Uh, what are your expectations going into this? Is, the, is there any way to start up front and get away, or is this legitimately going to be a case where the, the winner that we see after 30 laps is going to be the one who just got involved in the least amount of chaos? Definitely hoping to qualify well, start up front, and avoid the chaos and all the wrecking. So we're going to try and win this thing. And I'll ask you real quick, where does this rank? As, as far as cool things that you've gotten to do in, in iRacing over the years, where does this rank? Definitely the biggest NASCAR event on iRacing I've ever been a part of. Well, uh, we'll certainly wish you the best of luck. I know you've probably got a, a fairly sizable streaming audience getting ready to watch. Justin, thanks for taking a few minutes here on the pre-race show to chat with us. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you coming up when we get 30 laps underway. Thank you, guys. Thank you for broadcasting. 
Justin Batello, James Pike, uh, as we mentioned, one of the names that we have seen easily on uh, a lot of podium broadcasts in the past and uh, probably one to keep an eye on, although I think everybody at this point is going to be uh, keeping an eye on staying out of trouble as far as it goes tonight. And we turn from Justin Batello to Alex Hayden, who now joins us up in the booth with a very special guest, the senior vice president and the chief digital officer of NASCAR, Tim Clark. Tim, thanks so much for, for being a part of this. Thanks for hanging out with us here on Easter Sunday evening. First of all, happy Easter to you. And secondly, thanks so much for, for all you and NASCAR and everybody has done to, to try to put this event together. Uh, no, uh, it's it's been a lot of fun, and I uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate you guys doing this tonight. I uh, I don't know what I've gotten myself into. Um, I don't know what, what Landon has done to me, but uh, we're, we're going to try to have some fun tonight. So give us an idea what, what's uh, going to be taking place for yourself. Senior Vice President, Chief Digital Officer of NASCAR, what, what is the outlook for you as you get set for this event? Uh, I, I told uh, Parker and, uh, and Landon earlier today, top 50. That's, that's what I'm going for. <laughs> if, uh, if I can finish in the top 50, I'm submitting myself for the Hall of Fame. That's, that's the goal. Tim, is there any sort of strategy you need to employ here? We've we've seen practice. We've seen other events on this track with these cars last night. There's going to be some, some chaos out there. Do you have a strategy in mind? And if so, are you willing to share that with us? Uh, I think my strategy is to try to make one lap clean. Uh, I, I've, uh, I've, I've, I've turned about 100 laps in practice. Uh, and, and the first turn and pit entry or pit exit is, is a beast. So I'm just going to try to get through that. And, and, uh, the rest of it is gravy. Tim, I'm curious, knowing that uh, you're kind of carrying the banner for NASCAR proper here, if you are able to, uh, to go well, are there any bragging rights that you can bring back and go say, Hey, we didn't do half bad here. Uh, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to let, uh, Brandon Williams hear it a little bit. Brandon, uh, Brandon's been giving me a hard time on Twitter. So, um, I might, uh, I might give Brandon a little bit of a hard time and listen, I, I think we're, we're all looking forward to get, getting back to the office and getting back to normal. So when we do, I, I won't, uh, I won't hesitate to remind everyone if I had a good finish. And finally, uh, we've had many guesses on the over-unders on the amount of times people are going to get involved into incidents here, Tim. Any thoughts on where you think you might stand and or maybe where the number might be to actually win this race? Speechless pits. That's the answer at that point. Well, hey, James, I'm going to add to this. I, my phone just buzzed. I got a text message for a late ad to the entry list. Uh, Tim Clark referenced Brandon Williams, and Brandon is actually in the race as a very, very late ad. And uh, his response was, Tim's going down. So we have an intra NASCAR challenge then. Yes, Fair we enough. do. That checks out across the board as we're now joined to the booth by another one of the premier streamers on Twitch, Steel Horse Lives. Jonathan Cadell joins us in the booth. And Jonathan, we spoke to Justin Botello a little bit ago. And Jabo spoke of how cool it was to be in here. Uh, we know uh, you've been a big time Denny Hamlin fan throughout the years. And now you're racing against Denny Hamlin straight up. So is goal number one to beat Denny or is goal number one to win the race and survive? Well, this is not the first time I've raced with Denny, and uh, Denny is 0 for like 12 against me, so he's about to be 0 and 13 against me tonight. But this honestly is the coolest experience ever, and I've been saying that a lot the past few weeks, but this is, this tops all of them right now. Have you had the chance to practice this combo a little bit? I know uh, not really too many days to get used to this, and then the Easter holiday, keeping a lot of people occupied. So how much experience do you have on this track, this combo, this setup? I love going in there and running a carb cup here. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't run carb cup here a lot, but uh, when you get get a lot of people in here uh, trying to run this, it's it's mayhem. Uh, it's a lot more mayhem with no damage on and 60 cars on here, though, so that's very hard to practice that, you know? And uh, you mentioned Car Cup. I think it's a great entry point. For those who aren't necessarily familiar with iRacing, uh, take a moment just to explain what Carb Cup is and how useful it can be, especially for new iRacers to get involved with the sim, get involved with the service for their first few laps and their first few go-rounds. So Carb Cup, uh, you run the Cup car. Uh, it's your first experience running the Cup car. You can run it as a rookie. Uh, it can be a little... Uh 
frustrating because there are no cautions. Uh, there's There can be calamity out there. But I've had some of the best races I've ever had on iRacing and Carb Cup. I've also had some of the most frustrating. But it's your first experience with a cup car, and you see how uh, daunting it can be to drive one of these things. But now you've got a lot of seat time. We know you spent plenty of time in the cup car. Uh, final thoughts here before you get going to the green flag. And, and what's your mentality? What's your strategy in this race? Well, I'm usually good at starting in the back because I'm very slow. But with that, I'm very good at avoiding crashes. And so I've got a lot of experience with that. So my idea is to just Moses my way through there, part the Red Sea, go out there and take that checkered flag and let him know who's boss. Jonathan Cadell, who will take a crack at this in his Toyota tonight. We'll see if we see Jonathan in victory lane a little bit later. But Jacob Seelman, we now turn to a driver who's got uh, maybe the greatest combined amount of experience in sim and in real life, Parker Kligerman. This now wonderful this night. Oh, the people from all fun. over the Parker world Kligerman, gathered what here. Did, what have you and for the excitement of the races oh, with the best drivers in the world and with the greatest fans in the world, we invoke your blessings and say you are our God and we are your children. Shalom and amen. Um, which has been an exciting experience. Seeing my screen spin around a thousand times has been nauseating. But, hey, you know what? I uh, got to support a buddy. Got to show up here and see if we can wreck less than the rest of the field. You've been an avid supporter of, of eSports in general, uh, obviously with the support of the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing series. But uh, unlike those broadcasts that we see uh, biweekly on Tuesdays, what we're about to see tonight is nothing like that. This is a, a whole lot of entertainment value, and I imagine a whole lot of fun for you guys in the field as well. Yeah, this is like dropping a bunch of some of the world's best race car drivers in soapbox derby cars at the top of Mount Everest and saying go. I mean, it's going to have the same amount of carnage. Um, I don't really see us ever getting more than three successive laps in a row, uh, being that you, without wrecking. So possibly you'll get ejected out of the track multiple times. That happens about every second time I wreck, so that's going to be interesting. But, hey, look, you said it. Esports, all this has been really cool to see it, getting a huge spotlight on it. Obviously, it's unfortunate circumstances, but... I'm enjoying it. I'm uh, I'm in uh, with Connor Daly and Colton Herta and James Hinchcliffe and in our Discord. I had to give them a shout out, so um, they just really wanted that. But we're gonna uh, we're gonna try and tan the front, wreck less than the rest of them, and see if we can get in victory lane. How cool is it for you? I mean, you've been a part of some of the eNASCAR Pro Invitational events, Parker, but to be a part of an all-star field like this with guys like New Garden, TK, uh, Askew, you know, some of the uh, caps, some of these guys who aren't normally in the NASCAR discipline, that's got to be a treat. It's cool. I mean, I think this is one of the coolest things about sim racing is that and what we're seeing right now in the motorsports world is you have so many different facets of it coming together and you know doing things like this and racing in different series like the rally cross series i'm doing with iRacing that's uh you know a bunch of indie car rally cross people x games like travis Pastrana, nascar drivers it's just cool to see us have this chance where motorsports wants to come together and we're trying to do it in real life but here in sim racing we can make it happen way easier so um, I mean, I'm friends with a lot of these guys, you know, throughout the different racing worlds, but, you know, it's hard to keep up with each other with our real life schedule. So we've all we've all had that chance and we're having a lot of fun with it. And hopefully this is something that even when we get back to normal with everything and we're racing in real life, we can continue doing this on the sim side. So last thing, uh, the over under that Alan Beswick put on the number of wrecks for the winner is at one point five. Are you taking the over or the under? Well, see, this is the strat here's the discussion going on. See, there's a little bit of strategy, which is maybe you just go to the back, ride around, right? Don't get involved in wrecks. That means you won't get ejected. You won't have to tow. You probably put yourself in the best position. Then there's another strategy, which is mine, which is go as hard as you can, and maybe you lap those guys uh, at one point. So we'll see. I think it, that's a little low. I, I'm going to go for about three and a half wrecks for the winner of this race. We'll see how that all plays out. Thanks so much for spending a few minutes here being the pre-show and, and all the best in qualifying. And then let's hope you wreck less than everybody else. Appreciate it, guys. Enjoy the show. Have a good time. A absolutely. Parker Kligerman there will step in immediately and bring Myatt Snyder on board. Myatt Snyder, of course, uh, he's run the NASCAR Xfinity Series, the Gander RV and Outdoors Truck Series. Myatt Snyder, well, you're running a cup car in Monza. At Italy, the high banks, what are your thoughts after you've had some practice now? 
Uh, well, I'm currently flying through the air. Um, <laughs> I uh, might have to get back to you in a second. Um, yeah, Rodney Childers, I think, just sent me to space. Um, yes, this is quite an interesting race. Uh, not really sure what the best strategy is. I know you guys just talked about that, but uh, yeah, just going to try and keep, I, I don't know, maybe I can try and keep this uh, Tax Slayer Chevy Camaro ZL1 up front and uh, see what we can do. So that being said, before we let you get in and get ready for qualifying, how bumpy is the racetrack and what part of this track is the most challenging for you? Uh, just like timing your moves because, you know, you, you go into turn one and it's pretty much like literally jumping off a cliff if you're on the inside. So if you try and do that, you're basically just going to cause a, a 97 million car pileup. Um, but going into three, you have a chance. So it'll be interesting to see how brave people will get and uh, how to time your moves. Well, listen, we wish you all the best in this one. Get the timing where it needs to be and keep your car on the ground and not flying through the air. Myatt Snyder, all the best to you. Thank you, guys. And remember, slay it. And I believe Myatt Snyder going to be our final pre-race show interview, James Pike, before we roll into qualifying, which is going to be a five-minute session for these drivers to uh, hopefully put down a lap without too much calamity. I think that's going to be the most, the most interesting part of this is who can put down a clean qualifying lap, if anybody. And how do you play the draft? That's the more important thing. You could try and run a clean lap on your own, Alan Bestwick, but in order to get the pole, you're going to have to run with somebody and find a way to not only navigate the pack, but catch the runs at the right time in order to set the fastest lap time. Yeah, and uh, where you run up on traffic, if you run up on traffic, you know, it's just going to be one of those momentum things, uh, even during the race how to keep your momentum going without getting broken and without catching traffic at the wrong place at the wrong time. So should be interesting. I noticed early on a couple of the iRacing guys who had to run a qualifying race earlier in the week to get into this field uh, are having the most success early. And if you're curious, those names that you need to watch from that camp, the trio of Aaron McAkron, Kyle Putz, and James Schofield. And incidentally, Alex Hayden, Putz and Schofield happen to be top of the board one, two in practice. Yeah, they're, they're getting around this track much better than everybody else. 46.522 seconds uh, around this racetrack. That, that's pretty good getting around, what, 2.7 miles of high banked oval for, for Kyle Putz in the 31 car. Schofield, not far off. He's running a 55.2 compared to the 52.2 that Putz ran. So those two drivers putting down good laps here in this practice session. Joey Gase currently third. So Joey Gase uh, supporting NASCAR. He's running in position number three right now. We get set to move from practice into qualifying. Jacob Seelman. This was set up with the idea that it would be outright madness. The question is, what kind of madness do we see? Well, uh, for anybody that knows me and follows what I do through the week, uh, I, I'm a little bit of an expert in madness. Uh, I, I have a podcast that is titled as such, but uh, I'm really not sure what we're going to see here uh, other than you want to get off pit road early uh, like Kyle Putz did and hopefully be able to uh, turn, a lap, turn, you know, turn a lap relatively cleanly and relatively quickly so that you can just get it over and be done with it as uh, drivers are starting to make their qualifying attempts here during this uh, during this five minute block james so it's going to be interesting to see too the uh, balance between the sim racing specialists and the quote-unquote pros the nascar indycar uh, guys and the like to see who lands where and uh, who may have bragging rights going into the 30 lap main event and you've got opposing strategies, Alan. You've got guys like Kyle Putz, Justin Botello, who have jumped out ahead of everybody and want to run their own laps. And then you slide a little bit further back. You've got Garrett Smithley, Ryan Ellis, Kevin Swindell, Josh Balicki, all running in a pack, all trying to take advantage of that draft. Well, look, with 60 cars to qualify, it's going to be crowded. So finding clean air is going to be hard. Jumping out early is good until you catch the back of the pack that came off pit road later. So, there's, I mean, there's, look, this is, there's no clear winning way to go. And really, the other thing about it is, how important is it to start up front? I mean, you heard Parker Kligerman talk about, you know, the two different strategies of, you know, hanging out in the back and so on, just like, we, just like we'd see at a restrictor plate race. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see. Five minutes is quick, goes by in a hurry, and doesn't give you much time. 
as we see a lot of cars beginning to wreck on the front straightaway. Alex Saden, I almost wonder if there's a third strategy. We were talking a little bit before we went live about this, whether or not you could hang in the back, you could try and run in the front, or maybe the third strategy and the one that might be successful is one where you just watch for the wrecks and try and avoid them. We've heard a lot of the drivers talk about how we think that's the way that they're going to find a way to victory lane is to just make sure you don't get caught up in wrecks. Maybe you see someone go 75, 80% to make sure that they've got enough breathing space to avoid the wrecks so that they can run consistently and cleanly and ultimately end up at the front of this. I, I think that's going to be one of the biggest keys. I, I think that, plus where you actually start, qualifying is so important here as we've got that many race cars uh, on the on the racetrack over what around 60 race cars going to be competing in this event so if you qualify 30th 40th or 50th well you're going to have yourself a mess and, and keep in mind this is only a 30 lap race and these cars get around this racetrack uh, around 47 maybe 48 seconds in race pace on a clean lap that's going to go by in a hurry. So can you really afford to fall back around 50th or 60th and then wait for everybody else or at least expect everybody else to wreck? Who knows how this is going to play out? There may be somebody or two or three cars that gets out there and has a clean 30-lap run and doesn't encounter any problems at all. I'm leaning towards uh, the over on Alan Bestwick's leader and winner eventually at one and a half crashes. I have a feeling you might be right about that, Alex. Just, you, you look at the top five in qualifying right now, Jacob Seelman. Chase Cabry, Logan Seavey, Bailey Curry, Garrett Smithley, Tyler Reddick. So a, a bit of a stock car bent. But then you've got guys like Patricio Award, top seven. You've got Will Rogers, Dylan Gooden, Bobby Bonnie, Jagger Jones in the top 20 as well. So not necessarily a lockout amongst the full body car drivers here. No, and you drew two names that I want to touch on really quickly. Uh, it's really cool to see Bobby Labonte in this field. Uh, we've seen him in some of the eNASCAR iRacing Pro Invitational events over the last couple of weeks. Bobby has been a pretty staunch sim racing supporter all the way back to the beginning. And Jagger Jones, uh, repping for the Arkham and Ard Series West, uh, ran in that division last year under what was then the K&M Pro Series banner. Uh, certainly his family history is, is well documented, part of the Jones family of racers and Jagger uh, third generation uh, was was kind of a late call up I was talking to him late last night about him being in this and he goes I have no idea what I've gotten myself into but we're going to try it and see what happens and uh, you mentioned uh, that you, you were talking about it not being a lockout it's not a lockout at the top anymore because we just had a uh, sim specialist if you will jump up to P1 in the form of Adam Gilliland also, running fifth right now, early on in qualifying, uh, Bailey Curry's there. But the driver in fourth is the one that's really standing out to me here in qualifying. That's Logan Seavey. Yeah, Logan Seavey from the World of Outlaws Dirt Sprint Cars. Logan Seavey having a good run here in qualifying. He's jumped up into position number four behind Gilliland. Makes you, James, uh, sorry, I'll, I'll add in here, though. Logan Seavey has won everything there is to win, it seems like, on iRace in the last two weeks. Between a World of Outlaws Sprint Car Invitational main event, he won one of the World of Outlaws Late Model Invitationals. He won Saturday Night Thunder for the NASCAR set. I mean, the kid has done it all. If he could add a Monza Madness victory tonight, James, I would. I, at that point, I would literally say there's nothing the boy can't do. My hunch here is that it's probably something to do just with the way these cars twitch on the banking and the way you drop into the corners. The rear end likes to slide around a lot. We know how much those World of Outlaws drivers have to use the throttle to control the way their cars steer. So I feel like anybody who's got a little bit of experience using the throttle pedal to move the car may have a bit of an advantage here. And no surprise then that Logan CV is up near the top of the board. And as we close qualifying, we now turn back to Jacob Shield for tonight's invocation. Before we get started on this Easter Sunday, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this day that you've given us and this time that we can spend together in fellowship around tonight's eNASCAR iRacing event. As our world is challenged by and works through this pandemic, we're thankful for all the freedoms that we enjoy in this country and for all the many blessings you've bestowed on each one of us. We pray that tonight's race provide entertainment for all those watching and participating, as well as a momentary break from the struggles being faced within everyday life. We pray for fun in the spirit of competition, and we also pray that we remember the meaning of this day, that this is the day that your son rose again and brought light to the world, and it's in his name that we pray tonight. Amen. 
And we turn now to the starting grid for Landon Castles and Bonza Madness, which sees Adam Gillen set the fast time with a lap of 46.513 seconds to take the top spot over Jason Loafing. Chase Cabry will start from the third position. Fourth will be Logan Seavey, joined by his World of Outlaws compatriot Kevin Swindell in the fifth position. Josh Balicki starts from sixth this evening. Seventh will be Bailey Curry. Garrett Smithley rolls off from eighth. Ninth will be the 75 of Dylan Gooden. And Tyler Reddick rounds out the top ten. The NTT IndyCar Series champion Joseph Newgarden rolls off 11th tonight alongside multifaceted driver and NASCAR Cup Series star Kyle Larson rolling from 12th. Pato Award for the IndyCar Series is 13th alongside James Schofield, one of the drivers that raced his way in out of the sim racing specialist category. Landon Castle, the organizer of this event, rolls from the inside of row number eight alongside fellow NASCAR driver Kyle Weatherman. Four-time eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series champ Ray Alfala starts 17th alongside Justin Haley with another eNASCAR Coke Series driver Casey Kerwin alongside Will Rogers who completes the top 20. 21st is Corey LaJoy from the Cup Series. NASCAR Hall of Famer Bobby Labonte is 22nd. Jagger Jones will start 23rd. Jordan Taylor from IMSA Racing, and this is first ever sim race. He'll start 24th. Aaron McEachern will go from 25th. Parker Kligerman qualified 26th. Logan Clampett will go from 27th. The 28th starter is Anthony Alfredo. Going from 29th is Jonathan Cattle. And uh, Daytona 500 champion Denny Hamlin will go from 30th. Justin Allgaier out of the NASCAR Xfinity Series starts from 31st. 32nd will be Oliver Askew, David Sant in the NTT Data IndyCar Series this year. Kevin Hamlin rolls off from 33rd, the organizer of the replacements that you might have seen on iRacing's channels. Timmy Hill starts from 34th. 35th will be Joey Gase. Robbie Lyons starts 36th. Tommy Joe Martins begins tonight from 37th. 38th will be Nelson Piquet. Colton Herta and Ryan Ellis start 39th and 40th. Now, 41st tonight, going to be NHRA Funny Car champion Ron Caps alongside Ross Chastain in 42nd. Cody Ware starts 43rd alongside Indy 500 champion Tony Kanaan in 44th. 45th to Myatt Snyder alongside Stefan Wilson, Matt DiBenedetto, Dalton Kellett, Ryan Vargas, and Brandon Williams completes the top 50. Then you've got Spencer Boyd, 51st, James Hinchcliffe, 52nd, Justin Botello, Kyle Putz, Denny Lemkul, Rodney Childers, crew chief for Kevin Harvick in the Cup Series, Christopher Wheeler, Connor Daly from the Indy Cars, 58th, Ryan Truex is, is back there as well. Then you've got Max Pappas, Tim Clark, and Kurt Busch rounding out the field. As we take a quick look at the track facts before green, this is the Autodromo Nazionale di Monza, the oval that turns to the left, as is NASCAR style that we run tonight. A 2.641 mile, 4.250 kilometer circuit that opened in 1922. Approximately 30 degrees of banking in the corners, no banking on the straights. We run for 30 laps, which is just under 80 miles, just under 130 kilometers. In sim, it is the default day, May 20th or May 15th, 2020, currently about 8.45 p.m. Eastern local time and then 90 degrees air temp 90 degrees track temp winds headed to the north at 30 miles an hour 54 percent humidity so hot slightly humid windy just to make this a little bit more complicated as we get set to bring you monza madness adam gillen and jason loafing to bring the field to green for 30 laps in italy on this easter sunday glad to have you with us on podium esports as we get the green we're underway with racing at monza gillen loafing side by side chase cavery right there in the mix too as they make their way off into turn one and to jacob sealman for the first time Adam Gilliland out in front, side by side for second behind him as loafing Cabri CV trying to dice for position. They work through the banking there in the middle of turns one and two. It's still Gilliland with a car length advantage as they settle itself out further back in the pack around the Kyle Larson machine about 12th place. It is a hornet's nest, but the leader headed for turn three in the purview of Alex Hayden. And a challenge and change for the top spot. The inside lane has the momentum. That's where Chase Cabri gets a shove from behind. Logan Seavey will push Cabry to the top spot. Seavey will follow in his coattails. He'll ride in position number two. That'll shuffle Gilliland back to third. Everybody a little bit cleaner on the start. Alan Beswick than expected, but you can already see how much the rear end of these cars are bumping as one car goes around on the front straightaway. Everybody in trouble there on the front sets trying to avoid it and bouncing all over the place already. Uh, it was about, uh, what, 10th? 15th in line, somewhere about that. And so the middle and back of the pack getting set back early. Chance for some of these drivers up front to line up and try and get away. 
Everybody in trouble. Joseph Newgarden was the one that went around Alex Shaden, so he starts all that problem in the middle of the field, but it's still Chase Cabry in good shape leading everyone at the point. And he'll hug the yellow line that separates from the flat apron to that 30-degree banking of turns three and four. Now he gets a little love tap, a kick in the shorts, courtesy of Logan Seavey off turn four. The CV trying to pressure all of Chase Cabry, but cv has got to be careful. He's got some company in Dillon there. He's got Jason Loafing there too, Jacob Seelman. He does, headed back towards turn number one. Logan Seavey starting to get a little bit of dirty in the runner-up spot. One car slow on the apron of the racetrack, but it's Seavey looking outside, looking inside. The narrow grooves in turns one and two, and Seavey's trying to find a way around Chase Cabry. They spill out onto the back straight away, and now we're starting to see traffic getting ready to be a factor. Top three, though, ride single file, and back to fourth place now with Kevin Swindell, Jason Loafing. They spill into turn three. And they all begin to close in on that trio of cars at the front of the field, led by Chase Cabry. CV is tucked in line in second. Gilliland goes third. Gilliland was the pole sitter, and he currently rides in that group. A little bit of lap traffic ahead of these drivers. Spencer Boyd and Jonathan Goodell running in a tandem, and there's your first evidence of drivers trying to sit out at back. Alan Bestwick and just hang before we actually get into the meat of this race to survive it. And not just survive, but see if they can Get some calmness into this. You know, some of the drivers are talking about this track is so bumpy that you're just hanging on to the steering wheel. And getting these first few laps going, Jacob, has got to be a little bit calming. It does. There was one car slow. I believe that was Cody Ware halfway down the back straightaway. That scattered the leaders. It's Logan Seavey in three trying to get around Cabri. They work to the outside. Nothing there. Tucks back in line behind the back bumper of Cabri in turn four. Still, the front three go nose to tail off the corner. Everybody within this front 10 to 11, all in good shape. All the way back to Dylan Gooden, who currently runs in 11th, Jacob Shieldman. Do you try and start leapfrogging people this early, or do you wait? I think you have to wait a little bit, although I'm impressed these guys have been able to celebrate it or settle into a rhythm as CV got loose and spun down to the inside of the racetrack. CV somehow huh, hung on to it, but he'll lose eight, nine, ten spots as Chase Cabry continues to hold the race lead briefly. But that was a major shuffle at the front of the field in traffic. It's Cabry now alone by three lengths. Now Cabry has a different mindset as he had four, maybe five cars tucked right behind him on the back bumper. Cabri now finds himself running about a six car length advantage over Adam Gilliland, who's up to the second spot and closing in. Adam Gilliland there trying to sort his way. You see cars weaving around the lap traffic on the front straightaway, Jacob Seeland. Everybody just trying to position themselves for this big bump, this drop into turn one. It's almost like a roller coaster. You go downhill so quickly. It is, and that roller coaster sees Adam Gilliland starting to close in on the back of Chase Cabry in the battle for the race lead. Gilliland, one car length back as there's Calamity on the back straightaway. The leaders trying to avoid several cars. Kevin Swindell up and over onto the banking. He was inside the top 10 in fourth, and now Gilliland goes around in the middle of the pack. Everybody spinning and crashing down the back straightaway. This will really shuffle the leaderboard now. Cabry got loose up off turn number two. He slapped the outside guardrail. Car still crashing inside and outside as the leaders, whoever that might be, will now make their way up off of turn number four and will wait for timing and scoring. Best guess here, I think, is Jason Loafing in the 26. He's still rolling strong along the front straightaway, Alan Bestwick. And now, if you're Loafing, you're presented with a very interesting play. You're all by yourself. You might be the one where you could just sit back, wait, and maybe even cruise to victory so long as you don't wreck. He won't be able to cruise to victory because we haven't seen him upside down yet. So I'm trying to keep a list. All the cars that have been an incident so far, I've already given up. <laughs> no surprise there <laughs> at all, Alex Hayden, as everybody's found their way on their lids. And we've already had a few folks head to the Blue Emu Infield Care Center yeah, and get some of the race leader. Josh Balicki has just gone around. So Balicki, who inherited the race lead after the big crash on the backstretch, has now found himself with a little bit of calamity. He writes his race car, tries to grab a gear and continue on. And it should be Loafing now who outright has the top spot. And now Jacob Seelman will see who ends up a Loafing in trouble there. Runs into one car and the entry into turn one. And it's now Loafing and Justin Haley who takes over P2, Jacob. Yeah, Justin Haley, I don't know how he got through that crash on the back straightaway that was right between my purview and Alex Hayden's. Haley w snaked his way through in his uh, Colleague Racing painted entry, the Leaf Filter car. So Haley actually five seconds 
He was five seconds behind Loafing. He's making the pass to the inside in turn three. Going after it, trying to grab the top spot. Gets a little bit sideways as they work down into the corner. Good race for the top spot here. Six laps in. Haley loafing, Haley loafing. Oh, there goes Haley down to the inside at turn four. And loafing will take over the race lead. And now he's got space. He's got room to breathe. Alan Vestwick, nothing he needs to worry about, at least for the moment. So Timmy Hill moves up into the second spot. Of course, Timmy with a big win uh, of his own just a week or so ago. And now Hill all the way up to the number two spot, trying to chase down loafing for the lead. Working their way down the back stretch, headed for turn number three. It's loafing, healthy advantage of 2.3 seconds over Timmy Hill. Robbie Lyons will go third. Tommy Joe Martins is up to the fourth spot. Chase Cabry is rebounded. He runs fifth. Makes me wonder, Jacob Shieldman, if you look at maybe Tommy Joe Martins, Chase Cabry, those two are almost nose to tail. Is this the time to start trying to come together? And how much can you bump draft or really tandem draft 2011 style here without upsetting the rear end of these cars and spinning yourself out? You know, that's a strategy that we saw, James, in some of the practice races uh, go yesterday going into this event as there's a crash in front of the leader, Jason Loafing in turn one. He gets collected by a couple of slower cars, spins down the banking to the inside of the racetrack and that likely will open the door for Timmy Hill to inherit the top spot ahead of Robbie Lyons as loafing limping down on the apron of the racetrack trying to get back going again. Timmy Hill will continue to, to soldier along. He is the new race leader. Timmy, a fantastic sim racer, trying to avoid all he can that we're seeing right now. Being the race leader, guys, may not necessarily be the most safe place on the racetrack. It's not necessarily an outright guarantee, but I just saw Timmy Hill slalom his way out of turn two. Got on the brakes a little bit and then dodged the left dodge to the right. Almost looks like a skier coming out of that corner, Jacob Shieldman, to make sure he didn't get caught up in an incident. Indeed, and now Timmy Hill uh, trailing, trying to get a draft off the back of the Justin Allgaier machine as he works through turns one and two. Allgaier is uh, down the order a little bit, just trying to hang on, survive, and make some laps. But it's Timmy Hill, still the race leader, trying to avoid one car stopped in the middle of the back straightaway. He's down in the grass, saves it in turn three. But gets right back up on the racetrack. Nice piece of driving by Timmy Hill. Did not panic when he got the left side tires down on the grass. That enabled Justin Allgaier to, to scamper away just a bit. Timmy Hill picks up the pace once again. We thought, Alan Beswick, that this was going to be more of a strategy game. I almost wonder, with the way Hill's avoided some of these wrecks, if this is more of a showcase of your skills and just getting on the brakes and finding your way out of wrecks. It's not necessarily something that we thought we were going to see with the speed of these wrecks and how quickly things come at you. But with the way Timmy's got around a few of these, you can tell he's had some experience in the sim. Nope, there's more mayhem and chaos. You know, I thought gave us the best insight during the pre-race was Justin Botello, who said, I'm good at missing wrecks. Uh, he's up Hill to sixth place. Yeah, Botello up to sixth. Timmy Hill did not miss one. He got collected halfway down the back straightaway, ended up upside down, and Robbie Lyons going to be the first one behind him. I believe it's Lyons who was six seconds back and able to miss that calamity. Now settling in as he works down the, uh, down the front straightaway, James Pike, it's going to be Lyons picked up as the race leader. Lions the leader, but Tommy Joe Martins and Chase Cabry working nose to tail, one by one by one. Alan Bestwick show. We figured someone might try it. Here those two come trying to draft their way to the front. They're trying to get together and see if they can avoid some of this chaos and mayhem. Don't forget now, 18 to go. So Landon Castle told us the fuel range on the cars was set to about 16 laps. So everybody that hasn't, uh, everybody's going to have to make a pit stop here in a little bit too. And that could shuffle things up also. Race leader works his way into turn number three. It's Robbie Lyons, four and a half seconds over Tommy Joe Martins. But the leader, Lyons, is in heavy lap traffic off the corner. Really good shot there from Lyons. They get on the brakes. He gets turned. One car in behind him. It was Will Rogers, the Hawaiian from Maui, who got into Robbie Lyons. So now, where's Tommy Joe Martins? Where's Chase Cabry? Cabry now gets in trouble. Contact, I believe, with Logan Seavey. And it's now Tommy Joe Martins all by himself for the race lead, Jacob Seelman. Tommy Joe down to turns one and two with Logan Seavey trailing. Seavey has been into his incidents early on in this race, working lap number 14 for the leader. So we are closing in on 
on the halfway point of this race. Tommy Joe Martins spills off down the back straightaway. He's got CV in tow. CV trying to stay with him. Now CV looking for the slingshot, maybe to get a lap back in turn three. Seeing what he can do to do just that. Tommy Joe Martin's the leader. Cabri is second. Botello is third. Josh Balicki is fourth. And look who's up in the top five. It's Denny Hamlin has worked his way from the back of the field to fifth. How about Denny Hamlin, Alan Bestwick? Not a name that we figured would be up this far this early, but then again, you look at some of the names here that are in the top five. Tommy Joe Martin started nearly 40th. Justin Patello was 53rd on the grid. Denny Hamlin, 30th. Don't necessarily need speed and qualifying to make your way up front here. And didn't we have Kurt Busch starting scratch on the field? We did Kurt indeed. Kurt running ninth right now. Unbelievable to see how this has played out already as we approach the halfway point, Jacob Seelman. Still, Tommy Joe Martin's in oh. front of this as they wreck behind him. They're wrecking behind the race leader, but Tommy Joe Martin's all alone ahead of it. Ron Caps escaped that, and the leader in three. Yeah, Tommy Joe Martin's did a nice piece of evasive driving. Went all the way down as far as he could on the backstretch to avoid the car spinning out of control. Tommy Joe Martin's has the advantage off of turn four. And as Tommy Joe Martin's continues to lead, we now bring you tonight's iRacing Midway Race Break as we cross the halfway point of tonight's race, which as always is brought to you by iRacing, the world's leading online racing simulation. Developed for the beginning of a centralized racing and competition service, iRacing organizes, hosts, and officiates races on virtual tracks all around the world. iRacing is home to a wide variety of officially sanctioned series, with racing from the Australian Supercars, the Cars Tour, IndyCar, IMSA, NASCAR, the World of Outlaws, and more. As Tommy Joe leads this field over over Dre Alfala, Justin Botello, Josh Balicki now jumps up there with Casey Kerwin and Chase Cavery in six, going back to seventh. Kurt Busch runs in eighth, ninth is Bailey Curry, tenth in the grid is Ryan Ellis. Yeah, 11th right now, Cody Ware, Adam Gilliland in 12th, Robbie Lyons 13th on the last car on the lead lap, Jason Loafing a lap down in 14th with Landon Castle behind him, Danny Lemkul 16th, Anthony Alfredo, Ross Chastain, Ryan Vargas, Tyler Reddick, the rest of the top 20. Running 21st will be uh, now Tyler Reddick after getting passed. Uh, Colton Herta will go back in the 23rd position. Kevin Hamlin, 24th. Joseph Newgarden, well, he's being swept up as well. Newgarden is falling down the leaderboard, now currently 26th. Stefan Wilson, 27th. Kyle Putz, 28th. 29th, Justin Allgaier. And Jagger Jones is 30th. Dalton Kellett runs 31st. 32nd is James Schofield. Dylan Gooden is 33rd. Corey LaJoy runs in 34th. Aaron McAkron is the 35th at the moment. Will Rogers in 36th. 37th, Logan Seavey. Kevin Swindell in 38th. 39th, Rodney Childers. 40th, Jordan Taylor. Chris Wheeler is 41st, Connor Daly 42nd, Tony Kanaan 43rd, ahead of Bobby Labonte and Joey Gase, Jonathan Cadell, Spencer Boyd, Tim Clark, Oliver Askew, and NHRA star Ron Caps through 50th. Race leader Tommy Joe Martins peels off the racetrack. Here he comes to pit road for that pit stop right now. Tommy Joe Martins makes his way to his box. The Martins in the box. We continue on. It's Myatt Snyder, Justin Haley, Brandon Williams, Nelson Piquet, Kyle Weatherman, Logan Clampett, Pato Award, Matt DiBenedetto, James Hinchcliffe, Kyle Larson, and Max Pampas currently scored 61st. And that concludes tonight's iRacing Midway Race Spring. With over 130,000 drivers on the service and over 80 laser scan tracks and cars to choose from, iRacing is the original eSports racing game. For more information, you can visit iRacing.com today. So Tommy Joe still in control of this. Alan Bestway, but Justin Patello now charging on the outside, and Patello makes the pass with the lead, so Jabo up to P1. Yeah, doing just what he said he would, avoiding trouble and finding a way to the front. So Justin Jabo with uh, a solid lead. Uh, Casey Kerwin now is three and a half seconds back in third and across that midway point, so we've really shaken out the field, only down to 14 on the lead lap. Really beginning to dwindle everyone down now. Jacob Seelman as Jabo works his way through four. Tommy Joe's made his pit stop. So has Batello. So has Casey Kerwin. So all your leaders here not worried about pit strategy. This is fight to the finish and just go for it. And that's the biggest thing. We weren't sure how the pit stop for fuel was going to affect this lead battle. And now we see it's Justin Batello to the lead. Three seconds back is Tommy Joe Martins and Casey Kerwin out of the E NASCAR Coca Cola iRacing Series back there with four time coach. Champ Ray Alfala. That's the top four. Botello, though, halfway down the back straightaway, a relatively speaking clear track ahead of him to turn three. And he's hoping it stays clear track in front of him as well. He cleanly works his way through the
the midpoint of turns three and four, keeps the car planted right in the center of the racetrack out of harm's way at the bottom, and certainly out of harm's way with the guardrail to his right. Just looking at some of these front and drivers, Alan Bestwick, Patello's on his own, Tommy Joe's largely on his own, Casey Kerwin's got some drafting help though, in the form of Ryan Vargas, so makes me wonder if we might see Kerwin and Vargas try and link up here. Well, the question is, what kind of speed does it give them an ability to close in? And is that more than what kind of momentum um, breaking action might happen in front of the top two? Because that's really been the story so far. The biggest story so far, Jacob Seelman, though. How about the Sim drivers, Patello and Kerwin, both of Sim fame already running up towards the front of this field and in very good shape with about 10 laps to go. It's been impressive to see what Casey Kerwin and Ray Alfala have done. They started mid-pack, and I was a little concerned about that. However, they have been able to quietly and uh, slowly but surely work their way forward as we work towards the final third of this race. Kerwin third, Ray Alfala in fourth, and when they pick up this time across start-finish, we'll get a better idea of exactly what the gap is. The leader, however, Justin Botello, back in turns one and two now. Logan Seavey with him. However, CV one or more laps down at this point. So it's Batello by himself with drafting help from CV down the back straight away and getting ready to work more traffic. Rodney Childers, Alex Hayden ahead of the leader. He is indeed. Logan CV, by the way, is three laps down to the race leaders, trying to get one of those back right now. He works to the inside, coming off turn four. Rodney Childers will keep his car to the bottom, and here they come up off the corner. Patello's got some help, and he's got a train behind him, too, which might be the best thing you can possibly have. It's an equal three-car train, Jacob Seelman, to what Casey Kerwin has, so we may see margins neutralized on that front, and j might have the best protection he has behind him. Yeah, Logan Seavey playing pretty decent defense right now behind Justin Batello, and I thought Batello was going to make the slingshot out in front or out to get around the slower car of Rodney Childers there. However, he tucks back in now. Childers to the inside of a slower lap car down the back straight away. Batello and Seavey follow this lead pack of four cars heads for three. And the race leader is absolutely in a hornet's nest of lap traffic. He'll look now to the inside, trying to put another lap on one of those machines. Logan Seavey. He's trying to keep pace following the leader's tire tracks off turn four. Absolutely nothing in front of Justin Botello. I think that's the biggest thing. One car coming out in pit road. It's Bobby Labonte. But beyond that, it's clear track for Justin Botello, Alan Beswick. And if anything, we've seen that that can evaporate. But in this case, with some of these cars thinned out, may end up playing into his hands a little bit more than it might have done for Chase Cabry or Tommy Joe Martins or some of the leaders from earlier. But that kind of thing that you just saw, that slower car that just materializes down to the inside at the speed these guys are crossing the pavement on here, that's the thing that Botello and the other leaders have to watch out for in these final eight laps. Race leader is Justin Botello, 5.2 second advantage over Tommy Joe Martins. Casey Kerwin is 6.3 seconds back in the third spot. Kerwin all the way back there and now without the help they've strung themselves out a little bit Jacob Seelman and then you have to go way way back to Ray Alfala who's on the back straight away as Patello is already into turn one so it might be a three horse fight for the victory as we work our way in the final five laps and there goes Patello sideways. Batello sideways trying to hang on to it. I was looking a little further back as Casey Kerwin now enters the banking in turns one and two, and he really is all by himself right now in that three position. So for Casey Kerwin trying to work his way forward, he may be a little bit in the best spot right now as he goes three wide through some slower traffic down the back straight away. Kerwin trying to pick his way through and can see some lanes with clear track, Alex Hayden. Kerwin is running in position number three. Batello, the leader, Martins is second. But Kerwin in the midst of heavy traffic right now. Botello, he may need a change of shorts after that save. Race leader by five seconds, nearly got collected by a spinning lap car. He was able to jump on the brakes and avoid it all. Alan Beswick, is it a consideration if you're Justin Botello, you've never had the chance to race in a field like this? Are the pressures of just being around such a star set of field in his head, you think? No, not at all. He's he's done this uh, sim racing so much, and he's so good at it. Yeah, I mean, you heard the confidence he had in his interview before the race on the pre-race show. He was just going to try and miss the wrecks and get to the front and win the thing. Well, he started 53rd. He's leading with six to go. In really good shape, then, is Justin Batello. We think as Tommy Joe Martins is right there. Maybe a battle for second, Jacob Seelman. Here comes Casey Kerwin out of turn four, but he's got Martins in tow. 
The battle for second has been an interesting one. Kerwin last time by took it from Tommy Joe Martins in traffic and now they're headed back towards turn number one and Martins is going to see if he can't try and take it back. The problem is even though they've been two cars hooked up in second and third, they've not been able to make any tracks on leader Justin Batello who is still four and a half seconds ahead. He's down the back straight away already and Batello now in heavy, heavy traffic and he's lost Logan Seavey who's slow to the inside of him. Yeah, CV was not able to keep pace as they weaving or they were weaving their way in and out of that traffic. Keeping a close eye on that battle for second in turn three, it's still a good one. Casey Kerwin has it in the 60 car. Tommy Joe Martins in car number 44 using that draft. He lagged back and he's got a good run headed to the front stretch. Maybe a case where Tommy Joe Martins looks to the inside then to the outside, tries to cross Kerwin over to set him up going into one, but nothing yet as Casey Kerwin continues to hang on to P2. Two, Alan Bestwin. Working hard as we get into these final laps. Now four laps to go. A little traffic in the way. Trouble down low. They skirt it on the outside, and everybody gets through okay. Except for Kerwin Jacob Seelman. He's around in two. He is. He's around off turn two and onto the back straight away. That was your second place runner, Casey Kerwin, the Denny Hamlin Racing driver in the eNASCAR Coca Cola iRacing Series. He ran into trouble. That gives Tommy Joe Martins the 44, the second spot in three. But Tommy Joe had to check up to avoid that mayhem up off of turn number two. That gives up more track position to the race leader, Justin Patello. Uh, Justin Patello, the laps, however, are becoming fewer and more. Precious, Patello trying to get the victory lane. What are you thinking if you're Justin Patello in this point, and how excited are you to see absolutely nothing? Tim Clark's the first car ahead of the road on Patello, and maybe about 10 seconds between Clark and Patello. He's in really good shape, Jacob Seelman. He is in good shape. He worked through one and two. No problems there. Down the back straight away, only one slower car who has worked his way to drivers left on the inside. Patello clear on the outside to three. He avoids another car in turn number three that was at the bottom of the racetrack trying to refire. Batello, the race leader, his advantage over second place Tommy Joe Martins at five seconds. Justin Batello coming to two laps to go. It's about patience, patience, and more patience, Alan Bestwick. He's just about got this now, just has to execute in these final two laps. All that trouble going on behind him on the front straightaway at the exit of turn four, but ahead, clear sailing as Botello comes around for this final lap and a half toward victory at Monza. Off the exit of turn number two, Botello working traffic onto the back straightaway. Botello clear sailing for the most part. One car slow up ahead of him, but no pressure out back, Alex Hayden. He's a lap and a half from home. Trying to keep the car between the yellow line at the bottom and off the guardrail to driver's right. That race car planted firmly right in the middle of turns three and four. Justin Patello up off turn number four. White flag in the air for Justin Patello. It's just Tim Clark and then Danny Lemko out of the U.S. Legends cars. Jacob Seelman just about clear sailing for Jay Bo in the final lap of Monza Madness. Who would have pegged an iRacing specialist and a streamer coming into this race being the ultimate victor over drivers from NASCAR, IndyCar, NHRA, Dirt, and more. But Justin Batello has mastered the madness. He has survived, and he works on the back straight away for the final time. It is a hornet's nest ahead of him, but he's got no pressure from behind. 3.7 seconds and counting as Batello works to the inside of the slower car of Garrett Smithley in turn three for the final time. Let's Let's not give him the trophy just yet. Those two cars in front of him that are lap are going at it hot and heavy. If they get out of shape, that's going to block the racetrack. Here's the leader off turn four. He's got pressure from a lap car from behind. Oh, Justin Patello here, and what a holy moly moment for j -Bo, who comes across the line and wins Landon Castle's Monza Madness. No need to visit the Blue Emu Care Center for him. Success for j -Bo in this race, Alan Bestwick, and you pegged it. You called it about 10 laps into this race. All he had to do was just be really good at avoiding wrecks. And if I recall correctly, going back to that over-under thing, was he involved in any incident at all? 
It was close, Jacob Seelman. Maybe one, maybe two I, now I, that we can count on the back straightaway. I counted one for sure on the back straightaway, but I'm not sure that he was involved in a second one. And how about the effort, by the way, by Tommy Joe Martins, who ran him down, but ran Batello down in traffic on that final lap and was only eight car lengths. It was about six tenths of a second that Tommy Joe came up just short, but a strong, strong run for him to run up, uh, to be the runner up this, this evening. Impressive stuff in that final lap from Tommy Joe. And I think it was reflective of the two strategies that we had to see at that point, Alex. said You knew Tommy Joe was going to go for it. But J-Bo, in particular on the back straightaway, you could hear him lift off the throttle a little bit just to be safe, just to be careful, because you never know what's going to happen in a situation like this. It's nice to see some discipline out of a driver in this big of an event for Justin Botello, knowing all of the talented race car drivers around him from Indy 500 champions to Daytona 500 champions racing against knowing to have that presence of mind simply roll out of the throttle know where you're at on the racetrack and more importantly know where the competition is on the racetrack and let those lap cars sort it out amongst themselves no need to put your car in a precarious position heads up driving from justin Botello. As j -Po comes down, wondering if he might pull a burnout or not. You saw Casey Kerwin come right by him as well. Those two in the Toyota, she worked so well up at the front of this field. Uh, enjoying a little bit of the rewards as j -Po finally burns it down on the front straightaway at Monza and gets to celebrate. We'll talk to him in a little bit, but for now, it's time to take you through your full field rundown and tell you where your favorite driver finished this evening. j -Po gets the victory by about half a second over Tommy Joe Martins. Casey Kerwin comes home in third. Good run for the Denny Hamlin racing driver out of the E-NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. Ray Alfala, Fortune, the winningest driver and the driver with the most championships in the history of E-NASCAR comes home in fourth. He was the last car in the lead lap, incidentally. Chase Cabry with the strong top five run this evening. Landon Castle, the maestro, finishes in the sixth spot. Bailey Curry, came home in seventh eighth went to the 66 of timmy hill adam gillen the sim specialist finishes in the ninth spot garrett smithley who's shown his prowess in the pro invitational series in the last few weeks comes home in 10th 11th tonight goes to jason loafing one of the co-organizers of the event tyler reddick two-time champ of the nascar xfinity series finishes 12th robbie lyons was 13th just ahead of parker kligerman who we talked to during the pre-race he finished 14th tonight Aaron McCachron, 15th ahead of Ross Chastain. Colton Herta repping for the NTT IndyCar Series in 17th. Ryan Vargas, 18th. 19th from shotgun on the field was Kurt Busch. And 20th, Stefan Wils Wilson. 21st finisher was Dylan Gooden. Corey LaJoy came home 22nd. Anthony, uh, Anthony Alfredo, rather, came home 23rd. 24th was Denny Hamlin. Kevin Swindell was 25th. 26th place finisher was Cody Ware. Jordan Taylor settled for 27th. 28th was Ryan Ellis. 29th, Jagger Jones. And Joseph Newgarden was 30th. Dave Schofield came home in 31st. Kevin Hamlin out of the replacement side racing series was 32nd. Rodney Childers came home 33rd and 34th was Justin Allgaier. Myatt Snyder finished in the 35th position. 36th this evening went to Kyle Punts. Tony Kanon, TK, finished in 37th. 38th was where you'll find Josh Balicki. Dalton Kellett came home in the 39th spot. 40th went to Kyle Weatherman. 41st went to the Hawaiian Will Rogers. Jonathan Cadell was 42nd. 43rd to IndyCar driver Connor Daly. Brandon Williams, 44th in the intra NASCAR battle. Uh, he just beat out Tim Clark in 45th. That will be some office conversation, I'm sure. Joey Gase, 46th. Logan Seavey, early, uh, early on a factor, 47th. Nelson PK Jr., 48th. 49th to Chris Wheeler. Danny Lemcool, 50th. 54th. 51st place finisher was Bobby Labonte. Ron Caps came on 52nd. 53rd was Spencer Boyd. Pato Award was 54th. 55th was Matt DiBenedetto. Logan Clampett was 56th. The 57th place finisher, Oliver Askew. Justin Haley was 58th. 59th was James Hinchcliffe. 60th, Kyle Larson. 61st, Max Pappas. And 62nd was Ryan Truex. 62 cars in Landon Castle's Monza Madness, and only one could be winner. Justin Botello now back with us in the booth in j -Po. Where are your thoughts? Where are your emotions? What are you feeling? You've just won Monza Madness. 
I cannot believe it. I was I was shaking on that last lap. I cannot express my emotions right now. I am so excited. That was a hell of a race. That was awesome. We saw you navigate this track so well. You said it at the beginning of the broadcast when we talked to you about how important it was going to be to avoid wrecks. Ultimately, how did you sneak through so many of these and keep that car in one piece and headed in the right direction? I really have no idea. I uh, just kind of kept it up high and uh, kind of just drove by him. I cannot believe we won this thing. I'm just so excited. Uh, we raced against a lot of really good drivers, one of the best in the world, and I cannot believe to just be a part of this race. Um, I got to thank Kevin Hamlin for just inviting me to this and Landon Castle for putting this on because I'm just excited as heck. When you consider everything that you've done in your sim racing career and you've got so much on your accolades, you've run in Daytona 500s, you've won league championships across the board, do you have an immediate sense of where this accomplishment ranks amongst all the rest? Definitely one of the biggest races I've ever won in my in my life. I mean, on sim racing, this is awesome. I'm just so excited. I don't really know what to say. I'm kind of just uh, in shock. I, it's, it's surreal what's going on. I'm just so happy. And for those of you who haven't had the chance to follow j -Bo, for those who uh, might want to take a crack at your Twitch channel and everything that you do on a daily basis, because this is not the only time we'll see you on an iRacing, how can fans follow you and how can they stay in touch with you? Uh, they can follow me on uh, twitch.tv slash justinbow20. Um, that is my Twitch channel. And uh, I just want to give some shout outs really quick to uh, my spotter, Trevor Perry. He did a fantastic job spawning me through that. And my sponsor, VSpeed and Spot Sugar Graphics. Um, great paint schemes and an uh, awesome race. Justin Patello, winner of Monza Madness, courtesy of Landon Castle and Company. And we'll slide from j -Bo to P2. Tommy Joe Martins came home in the second position, and he is with Jacob Seelman. And I, I, I'm going to say, for a while, we weren't sure that maybe he might have been able to run down the race winner. Uh, it was close at the end for Tommy Joe Martins, about six-tenths of a second short, but one spot short. Tommy Joe... Uh, how was that, especially the last lap from your vantage point? Because uh, you, you were able to make up almost all the time you needed, just needed maybe one more lap. Yeah, I was thinking about it here, kind of in the debrief. Um, I think I shot myself in the foot. I was leading the race and spun out coming off pit road uh, by myself <laughs> to kind of put myself in that hole. But um, I heard everybody was going to kind of make it tough on the leader there that last lap, and I knew I'd have a shot at it. And uh Coming off of turn four, I saw just how much traffic he was in. So I knew that uh, just because he got off turn four didn't even mean he was going to make it back to the line. So to, to miss it by six tenths of a second, that's uh, <laughs> that's a little bit of a bummer. But at the same time, it was really fun. And, and when there's 60 something cars in a race and everybody's going to wreck, you don't expect to finish second. So I will gladly take it. How crazy was it trying to avoid some of the wrecks over the course of that race and then be able to come out where you did? Because it just it looked like every time one of you guys would get clear track for an instant, just as quickly it would be clogged again with cars spinning and crashing on the inside. Yeah, it happened several times to me. I wound up having to dodge um, probably half a dozen wrecks that I felt like I was in a pretty safe spot and then it wound up just it immediately clogged up. So I, I just kind of told myself uh, when I got alone that that was probably the best place I could possibly be. <laughs> uh, anytime I saw guys getting stacked up, especially cars that were multiple laps down, it's, there, there was no sense in trying to bump draft anybody or anything like that. It was trying to just find clean track as best you could. And, and then when something happened, it's just a little bit of luck and you just hope you make your way through it. To put all these different drivers from different disciplines in the field, uh, to, to put on an event like this that is as much about the entertainment value as the competitive value, how much fun was that to, to, you know, just to be able to be on track and run against some of these guys tonight? Look, I drive for a small team in the Xfinity Series and my family team, and it's still just odd to me every once in a while that I get to uh, even get invited to something like this. So big shout out to Landon Castle for, for including a lot of the guys are maybe in, on smaller teams in the NASCAR world, uh, like myself, uh, to an event like this, because it's really cool getting to race with all the guys there in the Cup Series and the IndyCar and sports car racing. And, and at times, you know, some of those names would pop up in the chat and I would just go, oh, this is pretty cool uh, getting to be a part of this. And and I went into it completely with an open mind, knowing that this was going to be a complete mess and just really just taking it fun. Um, and I actually got spun out on the initial lap. 
on the, on the initial start of the race. And I think that wound up being the best thing that could ever happen to me because I kind of got separated. And I just told myself, well, everybody else was probably going to wreck anyway. And then they did. So just the, the race totally, totally just kind of came back to me. Um, and uh, Landon had mentioned that kind of at the beginning of the race that, man, just you, if you go flying out of the racetrack, you still have a shot to win the thing. And so I didn't really get discouraged. And I just kind of kept riding around and it came right back to us. Well, uh, certainly congratulations on surviving the madness, Tommy Joe. A lot of fun. Uh, P2 for you. Any sponsor shout outs, thank yous that you need to give for your team? Yeah, I ran that Kyle Petty throwback uh, tonight. So that's uh, Kyle was kind of always my, my guy in the Cup Series. But AAN Adjusters and Diamond Gusset Jeans and Gilreath Farms Red Angus, they're the sponsors for our uh, Xfinity team. And we can't wait to go Xfinity racing again uh, just as soon as NASCAR gives us the OK. So can't wait to get back to Martins Motorsports and hop back in the 44. That's Tommy Joe Martins, who comes home P2 in Landon Castle's Monza Madness here tonight. And we are going to shift one more spot down the order and uh, see if we can't catch up with Casey Kerwin, who completes the top three, standing by with Alan Bestwick. Well, Casey, did you go flying out of the ballpark at all? Uh, I tried to. I was flying through the air quite spectacularly on lap one. But thankfully, I landed... Did a couple barrel rolls and then came back on all, on all four wheels, so I was able to drive away. Yeah, fun. We talked about this being kind of mayhem and chaos. What was it like for you for 30 laps? Yeah, pretty, yeah it, I died there on the first lap, and then uh, thankfully it kind of got us uh, into clean track. I was back there with Denny and Ray Alfala, Clamp, and a couple other people. And we, we got going for a while pretty clean, uh, got involved in some minor things, but never got fully turned around, just lost some time. Uh, and then there with like three, what was it, four to go, five to go, something like that when I was getting close to J-Bo for the lead, uh, got caught up in a wreck. It was, once when there's 20 cars sitting there and it's that late, you're just not lifted and hoping you get a Days of Thunder moment, but uh, I didn't quite make it out. Yeah, I was just about to ask you about that, and it took you out of a chance to maybe have a shot at the win. So going forward for you, this is uh, uh, just another step in the uh, the sim racing, the esports season for you. What's next? Yeah, so we, uh, Tuesday night, we run our fifth race of the year for the Coca-Cola series. Um, so have kind of gotten off to a rough start in that. So hopefully this will be a nice momentum gain going into Tuesday night so we can get a get a good run for, for Denny and, and the Jordan brand. So um, hopefully, hopefully this will carry into that. Any points in the uh, Monday morning debrief for beating the boss tonight? I don't, I don't know. We, we were working together there. He was ahead of me for a while, then he got in a crash. So it kind of went both ways. It kind of came down to luck, but... Maybe I can hold it over his head for a little bit. All right, there you go. Well done. Casey Kerwin finished third tonight, James. Casey Kerwin, your third place finisher. And, and good that Casey brings up the next event for the E-NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. That's one of the many events that you can find in the world of NASCAR and in the world of iRacing this week. It starts off with our fifth round of the E-NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. Evan Pasoko, Tim Terry, and Randy Chenneth on the call as always from Richmond Raceway. We go short track racing this Tuesday night, April 14th at 9 p.m. Eastern. And if you can go to enascar.com forward slash live or iRacing's Twitch Facebook Facebook and YouTube channels, you'll be able to catch that event. Then, Anthony Alfredo's League, the Esports Racing League, takes the Cup cars in their premier series to Richmond as well. Wednesday night, 7.40 p.m. Eastern, we'll get the green flag for our coverage at Podium Esports on twitch.tv forward slash ERL underscore racing, the official Twitch channel of the Esports Racing League. Thursday night, Ryan Vargas comes with the E-Trucks Rumble at Richmond. April 16th, 7 p.m. Eastern, twitch.tv forward slash Podium Esports for that broadcast. If anyone got the chance to see what went down at Atlanta last month, it's a lot of that. And then some at Richmond's. So many drivers in a star-studded field racing against drivers who will try and qualify their way in to make up the second half of the field. A mix of pros and joes that should be very entertaining. And then it all concludes on Sunday with the NASCAR iRacing Pro Invitational Series from Richmond Raceway. The stars of the NASCAR Cup Series take to Richmond at 1.30 p.m. Eastern on Fox, Fox Sports 1 and the Fox Sports app. Jacob Seelman. It's Richmond week just about. We know that the folks at Richmond Raceway have been gearing up for this one for a long time they've been one of the pioneers in the esports world across the last few years and i think more than ready for their time on the big stage yeah from uh from 
all the top all the way down. I know I was talking with uh, Richmond's Brandon Brown about it the other day. They've been looking forward to this just because even though we can't really go racing at Richmond, we can still go racing at Richmond and a couple of big races for them, as you mentioned this week. I look forward to it. Richmond is a very enjoyable track in sim to be able to watch the action from both with the trucks and the cup cars. That's going to be a treat. This, this was a treat tonight. Uh, it was mayhem, yes, but uh, at the end, I think we saw a tremendous sprint to the finish and uh, you know got to spotlight some of the guys that we didn't you know we don't always get to talk about James and that's what's cool with events like this when you can mix guys from different disciplines mix in some of the sim specialists it just makes for a really good time and I think that uh, largely was what was had there towards the tail end of the race. Alan Bestwick it was a brave new world for you this evening but now that you've got your feet wet in sim racing what have you seen what have you experienced and uh, final thoughts on your first foray into iRacing this evening well uh, three things first of all Landon said jump in it'll be fun it'll be chaos check as advertised uh second thing you guys are great at what you do and uh, it was fun and very generous of you to uh, to welcome me in and allow me to to sit in and I brought a street stock rig wise to a cup race so uh you guys are much better equipped for this than i am and i'd need to catch up on that to ever try this again <laughs> don't think you're as far behind as you lead yourself to be uh, and i have a feeling we'll see more down the road but alex hayden uh you've got the whole sim setup you've seen the rig you've at least seen i racing from afar but maybe not quite as up close as you have now with all of these drivers all this star power that gives us a sense of what i racing can be your thoughts on what you saw at monza this evening yeah, it, it was exactly as advertised. It, this was a historic old oval track with high banks and long straightaways. Throw cup cars on there, throw racers from every discipline that you can think of, and you put it all together for a fantastic recipe and create a dish that's just unmatched. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to be a part of it. Uh, iRacing.com is phenomenal. I, I've been a member uh, actively uh, for, for years and years. Uh, have not been quite as active over the last couple of years. That that will change after this broadcast ends tonight. I'll jump back on and start turning some more laps. But Jacob, James, and Alan, it's been a pleasure. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you guys for allowing me to be a part of this. Jacob Seelman, we've seen a lot in sim racing and a new challenge for you, for me. Nothing quite like this that we've done in all our time covering events on iRacing. Your final thoughts on what we've seen at Monza. Whew. Um, I don't know that I can compress it into 60 seconds, but uh, as both Alan and Alex said, it was most definitely as advertised. But I, I think my final thoughts here, you know, to see all the drivers that we've seen come together in, you know, support of entertainment and this cause, uh, particularly on iRacing over the last, you know, two, three weeks as the world kind of battles the situation that we're in right now, that to me, that sense of camaraderie within the sport has been what stuck out to me even above and beyond the race winners that we've seen across some of the pro invitationals and and the like and and i feel like that camaraderie extended to this booth tonight you know to be able to work obviously you and i do this on a regular basis but to be able to bring in both alan and alex and have them on board for this little chunk of madness was a real treat i think and uh, yeah, I, I hope it's something that we can continue to see whether it's us at podium esports or some of the other iRacing broadcasters you know, th this was a lot of fun tonight. And, uh, you know, if you were looking for entertainment, I think we definitely got that. Plenty of entertainment on offer throughout the iRacing world over these next few weeks as we continue to wait before we get back to the real-life tracks again. But if you are interested in starting your iRacing career, make sure you head to iRacing.com today. You can get a subscription if you want for maybe a little shorter time to get your feet wet. Three months, six months, a year even if you want to go full bore and jump into it. Start your career on the oval. Start your career on the road courses because it's not just NASCAR that you have available to you in iRacing. It's sports car racing, it's sprint car racing, late model racing on the dirt. It's all kinds of open wheel racing, especially down in the lower ranks of the Formula One world and the IndyCar world. You've got the feeder system to IndyCar building by Zay, the USF 2000 coming to iRacing in the coming few weeks, along with the BMW M4 GT4 that will join the ranks of iRacing momentarily. And so much to look forward to over the year. North Wilkesboro and the Fairground Speedway at Nashville 
Carl, also coming on board of the Sims show. If you want to find out more about this platform and the simulation that has powered so much of what you've seen both here tonight and over the past few weeks, head to iRacing.com for more information. We had a few visits to the Blue Emu Infield Care Center and a few Blue Emu toes this evening, but at the end of the day, it was Justin Pacello who took home the victory. And so many thank yous and shout outs to give. So many thanks to the drivers who took part. So many thanks to Landon Castle and everybody at his team for setting up this event and making it possible. And so many thanks to our crew here in the booth, Alan Bestwick and Alex Hayden for taking time out of their busy holiday seasons to jump in and join us for a race at Monza. For Landon and Cisco Scaramuza, Gary Sexton, John Theodore at Podium Esports for tonight's producer, Ryan Bauer. And for Alan and Alex and Jacob Seelman, I am James Pike, the voice of Podium Esports. Thank you so much for watching tonight's broadcast of Landon Castle's Monza Madness. We will look forward to seeing you Tuesday night, 9 p.m., the Enas Car Coca-Cola iRacing Series from Richmond with Evan, Tim, and Randy. We'll see you then. Until then, keep it off the wall, and we'll see you next time. Rusty Wallace. And I'm Johnny Bench. And we're no strangers to big time pain. Which is why we trust Blue Emu's pain relief products. I use it every day to keep me on the move because winning never gets old. Blue Emu pain relief products, non-greasy, deep penetrating formula gets down deep into your muscles and joints to do its magic. And speaking of magic. Blue Emu, maximum pain relief, the official pain relief cream of NASCAR.